it's like a cottage threw up everywhere in the best way possible hi guys welcome to my channel welcome back if you've been here before i'm delaney and on my channel i like to share informative and hopefully helpful videos on fashion usually every friday so this is going to be the first fashion friday of the year and i decided that we would go over the projected trends of 2022 so i love all forms of fashion i have a super broad sense of style and i like to try out a bunch of things i really love of going into trends just because they usually tap into a bunch of different aesthetics so to speak and it's really fun for me to explore and sort of get my creativity out in that way so I wanted to share today's video with you guys to help you feel inspired for getting dressed for the new year and also just feeling in tune with what's going on in the fashion world but I do feel like it's a little bit hard to make completely accurate trend predictions for an entire year but I've done some research and I pulled some things from a bunch of publications and platforms and things like that so I've rounded it all up to my favorite ones and I think the ones that will dominate the most over this next year so let's just chat about them also if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet it means so much to me when you do I also love when you give my videos a thumbs up and if you comment I always try to comment back so the first trend that I'm actually going to touch on is kind of the dot what am I saying? The first trend that I want to touch on is kind of the goth, moody, edgier vibe that is projected to be really big this next year. And I'm actually wearing an outfit that's kind of like that today. I stole my boyfriend's Chrome Hearts hoodie, which is really funny because when he first started wearing Chrome Hearts, I didn't really know about the brand. And I felt like it was weird. It reminded me of, what's that brand that it reminded me? Oh, I can't think of the name, Brighton, which seemed like grandma-y to me. And what's the other brand where they put like the crosses on the butt of the jeans with the stitching? Rock and Revival. It reminded me of that. And that is things that I used to like when I was younger. And so I feel like I had a weird relationship with it. And I was like, that's really weird. We don't want to wear that. He was like, no, it's really cool. Like rock stars wear it, rappers wear it. And I was like, okay. So long story short, I have fallen in love with the brand myself, so I love that Clayton loves it and I steal his clothes from it. So the whole sort of edgy gothic vibe is really cool. It can stem across so many different mediums, I would say. In this past year, we saw the wolf cut was really big. And of course, with makeup and stuff, there's tons of really creative, cool makeup looks that can be done with this aesthetic in mind. And also, obviously, with clothing, anything that's kind of embellished with more edgy detailing a lot of silver which I'm still a gold jewelry girl but I am getting more into silver and I just like that it's moody and edgy and it definitely just packs a little bit of punch in it so I love that and I think that it is going to be really big over the next year I think kind of in a 90s style way is how we'll see it be really big maybe 80s ish too so look out for that and if you are geared more towards like an edgy moody feel i think that this is a perfect overall trend that you can really embrace in the next year also i discovered or i researched this trend on pinterest it was one of the three top fashion trends that they had projected for the year, which is pretty cool. The next trend that I wanna talk about is something that I'm also doing today, and it's something that I've done for a while, and you know, the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. And that's wearing no bras. So this, I believe, was on Forbes where I read about it, and this was huge in the 90s or early 2000s, I wanna say, as well. And not wearing a bra in the sense that you aren't wearing, you aren't wearing a bra with a shirt that you can't tell you're wearing a bra, but also with sheer tops and dresses as well. So I'm all for this because it's sort of symbolism for women's liberation. I just think that it feels great to not wear a bra when you don't want to and also just free the nipple if you want to free the nipple. If you don't, that's fine too. So I'm all for that, accepting the body, celebrating the body, and I love that the no bra movement is going to be big. Like I said, I think symbolically it means a lot to women to be able to express themselves in that way if they want to. And I also think fashion wise, it's really cool and edgy and I'm all here for it. Also, I read that quarantine had something to do with the no bra movement too because we were so used to staying at home and being more comfortable and maybe not putting on a bra to go do things that we were just like you know what now that we're going back out we don't need to put a bra put on a bra still so 
interesting little backstory that could be tied to it. Also, I researched that one on Forbes, I believe. I can link all of the articles and things that I used to sort of pull these ideas together if you guys are interested in reading those too. Okay, this next one is perfect to talk about right now because having New Year's Eve just happen and the holidays and everything, there was of course a lot of shiny things happening and I love that it always feels very festive, especially for New Year's Eve. I think everyone's go-to is to wear something sparkly, but in the coming year, it is also projected that sparkly things in general are going to be a trend throughout the whole year. So if you have things that you were styling for the holidays, I think that you can still style them throughout the year, and it's really fun. I think that this could stem from the whole pandemic and things being really dark and hard for a lot of months and I know they are still really hard for a lot of people for all of us but I think you know the movement of so much color happening in the past year and playfulness and joy coming out in our fashion expression as well can be linked back to this new era of going through hopefully the hardest part of this whole situation and maybe not being completely on the other side yet but still celebrating life a little bit more which comes out in our expression therefore our fashion so sparkly things are going to be huge i think that's so fun i think all of us girls and guys too can be included in that love a sparkly thing because it just makes us happy so Celebrate the sparkles this year. Okay, so one thing that I've actually found myself gravitating towards without even thinking about it and without researching it first for this video is more tailored silhouettes and less baggy ones. I will not ever probably completely rule out baggy things because I love that sort of boyish feel it gives. I mean, I'm wearing Clayton's huge sweatshirt right now and I love that, so I'm obviously still into baggy things, but I do notice that I will pick up up t-shirts especially that aren't oversized anymore I do like some t-shirts that fit just more true to size I don't necessarily like them to be skin tight but I used to want all of my t-shirts to be gigantic which I still appreciate and I still love in its own right but I found myself gravitating towards these more fitted t-shirts which which I thought was really surprising and Clayton my boyfriend as well started doing the same so I think that that whole style is definitely going to show up a little bit more in more tailored fits without completely ruling out baggy things, of course. Another thing that I have seen a lot lately and I'm into, but also I find it is really hard to style for my body type is the catsuit movement. So I absolutely love the way that these look. I've loved this look for a while and every time I try it, I just don't feel super confident or um, like it's the thing that I really want to put on when I get dressed. I think just being a little more straight um, and not as curvy, this can be kind of a hard look to achieve depending on how comfortable you feel in it, of course. But I have seen it come up a lot and I think that it's such a cool look. I love something that's just styled and ready to go. Two piece sets are great for that reason. And now if it's just one article of clothing, I love that too. And I like that it's a little less feminine than a dress because it is still a pant variation. So I think that's really cool I think you can do a lot with this too you can dress it up and make it fancy you can make it really luxe you can also make it really laid back casual street style even so I love that um, I'm actually on the wait list for the skims one because I think the skims one I think is sort of shapewear so I think it would be tight enough that I would feel maybe curvy enough in it I don't know it's it's a personal problem for sure but if you guys are into cat suits that's great because they're gonna be big okay so another one that I pulled off of Pinterest is what they called dopamine dressing and I touched on this a little bit before in this video when I mentioned the color movement of the past year and that essentially is still sticking around and is still going to be huge in 2022 which I love because before that I was one of those girls that was super into neutrals and I still am the largest portions of my closet are predominantly 
neutral, but I have embraced color so much more than I ever thought I would in the past year and a half. It's just been huge. It's taken over the scene in every single season and every single category of fashion. I absolutely love to see that because it's just an expression of happiness and joy. It's just a broader spectrum of being able to express yourself than solely dressing in neutrals, which I think a lot of people have been able to branch out of in the past year and a half or so. So I'm really excited to see that continue to go on. And if you're doing any investment pieces this year or last year that were colorful, that's great because I think that they're still going to be huge for years to come. Which leads me to my next trend and that is specifically bright accessories. So I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You've probably seen them everywhere. Celebrities, Pinterest, street style, Instagram, whatever it is. Pop of color in the outfit has been huge and I love to see that too because if you're not super comfortable with color but you do want to dabble in it, these bright accessories are a great way to do it because you're not going to have to commit to a full wardrobe of colors or even an outfit. It's just going to be a little pop. So I love doing it with beanies lately or trucker hats, dad hats. It's a great way to tie it in. Also have seen so many bright colorful bags that have taken over the scene. Bottega, who else is really good at that? Balenciaga, I feel like I've seen a lot of color from them. It's been really fun to watch and with heels, oh my god, I'm obsessed with the way a colorful heel looks with an outfit. I've seriously fallen in love with that over the past year or so. Little bright pops of color in your outfit is gonna be on trend for sure and it's a really fun easy style that I think everyone can do. Another one that I'm sure will not surprise anyone because we've seen it come onto the scene over the past couple of months or so is the low rise. And this is another one that I'm not sure how I feel about it. I definitely remember a few years back saying I will never wear something low rise again because you look back at those pictures, however old you were, I was in middle school I think when low rise, low rise was really big and it's embarrassing to me. Like it looks so bad, especially the shorts. We would wear shorts that were this big, you know? The shorts were so low rise and then we wanted them to be really short so they were like this big and they just look so bad, they look so bad. I kind of have PTSD from that and I'm like, I don't wanna touch that, I don't wanna do that, but I've seen so many cute, cool girls on TikTok and Pinterest wearing low rise and it definitely inspires me. But again, I'm afraid that might be something that is just not well suited for my body type. So we'll see if I end up dabbling with the low rise or not. But if you can get away with it, you absolutely should because I think it looks so cool when it's done right and when you feel good in it and you feel confident in it. I think maybe instead of low rise jeans, I would try a low rise skirt, like a maxi skirt. Maybe I could get into that. I don't know though. Don't, don't count on it. Okay, and speaking of low rise, something that goes hand in hand with that, that we've seen taking the scene by storm over the past couple of years and in general for just for a while, I would say, is crop tops. And even more specifically than crop tops, it is like accentuating the belly area, the midriff area. A lot of these things are things that come back through the years, of course. So this is very reminiscent of the 90s and 2000s, I would say. But wearing the belly chains and the belly jewelry has been taking the scene by storm lately. So again, this is something that I don't really know how much I will actually participate in this trend because I don't know how confident I feel doing that. Just because I am so straight, I don't know if that's like the cutest thing for me to do. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Crop tops and low rise with a little belly chain or something. If you do it right, it looks so freaking good. And I think it's really fun. It might not be for me, it might not be for everyone. It is worth noting in this video because I think it is really cool and it is definitely gonna be a big thing for the next year. Also, if you're not comfortable doing like a belly chain and showing your belly, another way to kind of reiterate that trend is with a chain belt. You can do that over a dress, over a sweater, even over a blazer. I love the way that looks, but just playing into that trend, but making it work for your personal style or your body type, whatever you're comfortable with. All right, another 2000s thing that always reminds me of growing up is tube tops, and they're supposed to be big going into this year, 
color which I'm actually really excited about because I've always loved tube tops and I actually think for my body type they are pretty flattering I just love the way they look they're really easy to style as well and I love that they're back in in on trend i actually have this bodysuit version of a tube top from express that's from their body contouring collection so it's really nice and tight you don't have to wear a bra with it checking that trend too and it's so freaking cute i love wearing it with sweats with denim with skirts with slacks it's honestly so versatile i love to see that coming back because it is very nostalgic for me and something else that kind of goes with that as well is choker necklaces so i always loved choker necklaces growing up my mom wore a lot of them and i was obsessed with my mom growing up i thought she was the coolest prettiest lady ever of course i think that's where i got my love for them and just being you know growing up in the 2000s all the pop stars would wear them and they're just really sexy and cool instead of girly or dainty so i love that i only have a couple of choker necklaces in my collection right now i used to have like a really cute black one i still have a denim one with the little holes in it that's really cute but things like that that are just very 2000s y2k are gonna be huge and they have been huge for a while so i love seeing that again because it's nostalgic and it's just cool okay and then the last one that i want to touch on is pearl core so this is kind of like cottage core i think that's like where the name stems from that sort of what would that be naming system with the core at the end so cottage core is basically you know I don't know. It's like a cottage threw up everywhere in the best way possible. Like throwing up sounds like a negative way to say it, but it's just florals and lace and grandma things. And it's just, you know, it's like grandma chic cottage core. So pearl core is essentially just really pearls on everything, which I actually do like this because I think that pearls are so classy. They're really timeless and there's ways that you can style them to fit so many different genres so i have this pearl layover bralette that you can style over a t-shirt you could wear it with leather to make it a little bit edgier or you could do it with frills and lace if you wanted to be more feminine so i actually love this because i think that it is really versatile even though my first thought goes to very feminine and girly. I think that you can do a lot with it. And I love anything that is very textured, especially in fashion. I think it helps make your outfit look more stylized and it also breaks things up. So having pearls be a big thing this year is gonna be great for adding texture to fashion. And I also think that we're gonna see pearls across a lot of things. So jewelry, clothing, nails, makeup, hair, they can just be inserted anywhere so that's really cool and that is all of the trends that i found and spoke to me the most so obviously you guys will see what really lays out for the whole year and what really turns into be the most trending things for each season and i will have videos each season for what my roundup of the biggest trends are for that particular season but i think that this is kind of a fun way to kick off the year and start thinking about your fashion for 2022 and what you're inspired by and what you're drawn to and what we may see all over the runways and social media and real life so as always thank you guys for watching i'll see you in my next video